Hello, welcome to this video on the release of LWM Rack 1.02 Beta. I'm starting at my website, LWM Music, to show you where you can find the uh, LWM Rack development page. From the website, you just click on the face or enter site to get in. You go to the software page and LWM, LWM Rec has its own page right here's where you'll find it and it will have a list with 1.02 beta at the top and then as I go on new releases go at the top and you can scroll down to older releases and videos of course seeing previous videos is helpful in this series because the first one shows you how the whole system works and there's basically a technique to using it that you need to know for you to be able to build your own synthesizers and then this one covers um, the MIDI expansion modules and now this release 1.02 is going to have a few more modules that make it a pretty robust synthesizer building system. So let me show you what the new modules are. Now I'm going to zoom in on this so you can see it, but as you see I've made a rack that has two levels of uh, components. And uh, to get into this what you do is you right click, go to open, and here's the modules sub patch. And uh, if you don't know what the module sub patch is, you will want to see the previous videos. Um, in any case, those of you who have seen them, basically I extended the uh, graph on parent area and extended the background canvas. It's currently at 622 pixels for the graph on parent and 620 pixels for the background canvas. And so um, that allows me to put two rows of modules in. And so let's look at what the new modules are. First one is an LFO for FM synthesis. And we're going to utilize it to hear it. So I'm going to close this. Let's make sure I have a MIDI device up. I do not. So there we go. Now I do. All right, and so I made this instrument overall. It's a little kind of quiet. I'm still working on something with a filter to kind of boost signal after things have been filtered in a way that doesn't cause distortion. But um, in any case, I'll show you a little bit about that when I get to that module. First, I mentioned the LFO FM module. This is hooked up to this VCO module here. And basically, I have its sine output. You can use any of the wave shapes here. But its sine output is going into the FM inlet on the VCO module. You can see that in the modules page here. Although you see a lot of patch cables going around. It goes into the FM input here, and then the frequency output, this is a new outlet I put on the VCO module, it hooks up to uh, what's called the multiple input here. That basically allows the current frequency that you're playing to be um, part of the factor as far as how far up and down the, uh, the LFO will will oscillate because as you go up in frequency you want this to go up further in amount so that it sounds consistent since frequency is logarithmic um, lower frequencies the distance between them are smaller in number than higher frequencies so this allows it to have a multiple that gets multiplied by the amount here so that when you set the amount you can actually hear uh, consistency across the frequency spectrum. Let's do this. I'm going to move this combiner mix level up here so now we're just hearing this oscillator 
And what I'm going to do is put its center frequency somewhere around there, widen the cue a bit. So that's this oscillator, and it's being filtered. And so if we want to uh, have the FM modulation, you turn up the rate and the amount. Let's say you like this. Now when I play higher frequencies, it sounds like it's oscillating around the same distance. If I didn't have this adjustment in here for the frequency that you're playing, and or if you don't hook this up to frequency here, it will oscillate between 0 and 1, which will hardly sound on any frequency, first of all. But, um, you know, as this adjusts, basically the amount will sound similar throughout the frequency spectrum. So that's what that is for. We also have an LFO AM, but that's down here for amplitude modulation. So let's check that out. That will be on this. I'm going to turn this down here, first of all. Here's the AM um, LFO. And basically the way it hooks up is your output from whatever wave shape you're using in the VCO goes into the signal input here. And then you just adjust amount and uh, rate with these controls here. But its signal flow is different because its signal needs to go into this module. And then the signal comes out of here and continues on the uh, signal chain, where next it goes to the VCF. Now, before I get to the VCF, another new module is LFO PWM. That's for pulse width modulation. Basically, I have it hooked up using its sine wave output into P pulse width input on the oscillator here. And one thing you'll want to do is set your pulse width modulation down here to 1. So that way it allows you to oscillate between 1 and 99, which is a good range. It gets multiplied so that it becomes 0 0.01 up to 0 0.99 because the pulse width is, in pure data, basically calculated between 0 and 1. And so you need to stay within that range. And if you go all the way to zero or all the way to one, you don't hear anything. So it's got to be within 0 0.01 and 0 0.99. So let's hear this. So that's pulse width modulation happening there. Um, should have turned this off. There we go. Now it's just pulse width modulation. Add a little AM to it. Sounds pretty cool. And then up here I can add this back in by turning the combiner back up. Turn this down. Hearing the two modulations at once, AM and FM, can be nauseating. So, so now let's look at the VCF module. I have it on both signal chains here. Here it's filtering this one, which is a sawtooth coming out of the VCO right here. So the sawtooth is coming out into the VCF, and this is where you control center frequency. I have a signal coming out of the uh, band pass output here. So this is the center of the band that's being passed. And the Q. 
As it goes up, it narrows it. And then, of course, that's useful when combining with other signals. Both signals are sharing the combiner here, where you can balance between this upper up set and then the lower set by pulling this down. And so here, I have this coming out of bandpass also, although, let me do this. For the upper one, I'd like to put it through, have it come out the low pass instead of the bandpass. So when you select which one you want, you can go up here and say, okay, let's come out the low pass. And that goes into the combiner's first inlet because it's the upper signal is 1 and the lower signal is 2. And these being combined together. So now, I'm going to move this up so now we're hearing this through low pass. The VCF also takes a frequency input from your oscillator, so that way your center frequency can be adjusted based on what frequency your fundamental is, the note that you're playing. And now let's put the other one back in. And actually just put on this. The uh, bandpass, since it takes more material out, can sound quieter and so that's the uh, band pass on the square wave that is being modulated it's having its pulse width modulated <laughs> So those are the new modules. So now that you have three types of LFOs, there's plenty that can be done with that. And here I have basically the note and velocity converter that we're already aware of, basically controlling it so that it has good monophonic playback. So in this series, I just introduce and show you what the modules are and how they work. Um, there is one known issue with this patch, at least this example patch. I've been noticing over here in the PD window, where'd it go? Let me get it up. That there is some sort of audio signal being connected to a uh, non-audio inlet. And I have not been able to find this, <laughs> where it is. Could be in this modules patch, in which case it wouldn't affect you, because as you build new instruments, you know, it wouldn't be doing that. Or it could be in one of these modules, in which case if someone finds it, please let me know in the comment section so I can fix it. So it's a bit of a bug that has been eluding me as to where it is. The main thing is PD doesn't tell you or give you any indication as to where it might be. It's just somewhere in this overall thing. And I went through some individual modules, have not been able to find it. And I checked all my patch connections in this, in the modules patch, and I cannot find anything where an audio signal is connected to a non-audio inlet. But it's got to be there somewhere. And so please let me know if you find it. That's why this is beta testing. <laughs> Because I'm one person, I'm not a whole development team, so I can't, you know, I can't make perfection here. But anyway, this should give you plenty to play with now. And if you see the previous videos, you'll know how to use the other modules and how to put them all together. But uh, in any case, that's the new releases, and I have some more that are in the works to be coming up soon. 
Um, but next I'm going to put in the videos that show how these are built and how the mechanisms work. And so uh, that's in the Learning Synthesis with Pure Data series, starting with Series 2, Episode 5. And so Episode 6 and 7 will be these two new releases, 1.01 and 1.02 Beta. So you can see how they were built. All right, uh, that should be it for now. Um, the downloads for this are on the LWM Rack page on my website. Uh, they're below each release. They're below the video for each release. So when this one comes up, you'll see two downloads for it here where there's a blank and an example. Um, a folder that contains the blank rack so you can build from scratch in an example which would be this one that I built here okay so I'll see you again soon ciao